World War II saw the emergence of the United States Air Force as a potent weapon of destruction, an aerial arm that could range far over enemy territory and smash home pulverizing assaults. The war also left a tactical problem, that of developing fighter aircraft for the protection of its new super bombers, aerial giants with several times the range of World War II planes. This problem was shared with the McDonnell Aircraft Corporation of St. Louis, Missouri. After months of joint research, planning, designing, and often redesigning, the result was the XF-85 Parasite Fighter. This Tom Bum jet fighter can be carried completely enclosed in the belly of a giant B-36 bomber. For this reason, its stubby, unusual configuration must be compacted into an overall length of 15 feet. Upon release, the parasite must at least equal the speed, maneuverability, and firepower of the land-based fighter. But let's go downstairs for a closer look. First, we note its efficient single Westinghouse J-34 jet engine forming an axis around which the plane is literally wrapped for maximum compactness of design. Despite severe space limitations, sufficient armament is provided to give the tiny plane a firepower approaching that of large conventional fighters. A tail structure with an unconventional X configuration has been tentatively installed to avoid the necessity of folding the tail before enclosure in the parent plane. In this experimental plane, flight test instruments occupy the space intended for gun sights and electronic equipment. Pressurizing, essential for extremely high altitude operations, is assured by the canopy design, which seals the cockpit, besides providing excellent visibility. The sky hook, which engages the trapeze mechanism in the mother plane, is the parasite's sole means of effecting a landing. For emergency use, separate pneumatic actuation is provided in addition to the normal electrical actuator. Stubby folding wings measuring only 21 feet from tip to tip are sharply swept back for compactness and high speed potential. This action adapts the plane for complete enclosure in a B-36 bomb bay. The cockpit contains an astonishing variety of equipment designed for pilot safety and convenience. An ample supply of oxygen to prevent anoxia at high altitude. built-in injector for catapulting the pilot clear in a high-speed emergency. The XF-85's automatic fuel system operates without the use of a tank selector switch. Fuel is first fed into the main fuselage tank below the pilot from the more vulnerable wing tanks, so that these will be completely exhausted and purged before the plane reaches its critical zone of operation. Preparations are made for a trial launching and retrieving of the XF-85 from a modified B-29. Not intended for tactical use with this bomber, the parasite uses it for flight test purposes at Muroc Air Force Base in California. Because of the underslung fuselage of the parent plane, a specially built pit is required to facilitate loading and functional checks. First, the parasite is carefully lowered into position. There, its sky hook is engaged, and the stabilizing yoke lowered into place. The tiny fighter is then retracted to its snug position beneath the bomber, and pre-flight ground preparations are completed. The fighter carries no conventional landing gear, being equipped only with skids for test purposes. appears as a slight bulge below the fuselage. With the modified B-29 airborne, the pilot stabilizes flight at the altitude and speed required, and final preparations are completed for the launching. 
The pilot of the parasite is in constant radio contact with the trapeze operator and the mother plane pilot. Now he orders the trapeze to the extended position. He starts the Westinghouse jet engine, then checks his instruments and places his flaps in proper takeoff position. Next, he orders the trapeze operator to raise the nose stabilizing structure. The throttle is advanced until no drag is being created on the arresting bar. Finally, the pilot releases the sky hook. The XF-85 parasite drops clear and is in free flight. The hook is then retracted to its flush position. The pilot must have constant knowledge of the mother plane's location. This is done by special electronic equipment showing the pilot at all times the most direct route to his flying trapeze. In actual operations, the fighter can return periodically to the mother plane for replenishment of fuel and ammunition, making possible several missions over hostile territory. Be careful, little friend. These are your very first trials, and it was a little experience to learn this new technique. The retrieving operation itself is, in effect, a reversal of the launching procedure. First, the pilot brings the XF-85 up slowly from below and feels gingerly for the arresting bar with his skyhook. The trapeze mechanism includes a shock-absorbing device to cushion any impact of the skyhook on the arresting bar. After contact, the nose-stabilizing structure is lowered, the engine shut off, and the plane retracted. Used tactically in larger bombers, an additional step of folding and unfolding its wings for retrieving and launching is required, since the parasite is designed for hangering within a bomb bay of the Air Force giant B-36. If it can be said that this answers the problem of bomber protection, McDonnell is more than satisfied. Its future is speculative, for this is but the first step in solving the problems connected with refueling, rearming, and remanning protecting fighters in flight. The invaluable data being gathered in development of the world's first parasite jet fighter will make it possible for McDonnell to be of even greater service in the future in carrying forward developments made possible by the advanced thinking of the United States Air Force.